In this three steps to sketch, we are going to outline the method for graphing basic secant graphs. So those are going to be our secant graphs that are not shifted, whether that's horizontally or vertically. Um, these will be unshifted graphs, so basic. Um, they'll be in the form y equals a secant bx. And a couple notes. Um, first thing, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if you can graph cosine graphs that are unshifted, um, it is just pretty much one extra step here, just knowing what a reciprocal graph looks like, um, and you'll be able to graph these easily as well. Um, so if you are not familiar with how to graph cosine, go ahead and watch the three steps to sketch video on graphing unshifted cosine, um, and that will help a ton because you'll have almost all of the steps you need um, to graph basic secant graphs. All right, and then this is going to be, like we've said, for basic secant graphs, unshifted. Um, if you do have a, a secant graph with shifts, you'll have a very similar method, um, but we'll adjust it ever so slightly. So I'll post a video for that um, in a little while as well. All right, so here are our three steps to sketch for secant graphs. First, we're going to find the companion equation. So that'll be the cosine version of the equation and all the essential info for that. So those steps will be all the same as finding cosine graphs. Step two, we'll plot that companion pattern. So we'll essentially be graphing the cosine companion graph. And then in step three, we'll do the reciprocal graph. So we'll recip, sketch, and repeat. And that way you can have as many cycles as you'd like. So let's break this down a little bit more. Um, and I will post a lot of videos later that have worked out examples that will um, further clarify this method. So step one is to find the companion equation. So the reciprocal of secant is cosine and all of its essential info. Okay, so if you have an equation in this form, so an unshifted secant graph, your companion equation will look almost identical. You'll just replace secant with cosine since it's that that's its reciprocal. Okay, so the essential information you'll find, you'll easily identify A and B. The absolute value of A will be the amplitude of that companion equation, cosine. B will tell you how many cycles you have between zero and two pi. You'll be able to find the period, calculating it um, using two pi over B. So that's just the length of a horizontal cycle. Um, and you'll be able to choose some scale labels. So the way we do that in three steps to sketch is for the horizontal scale labels, you'll take your period and divide by four, and that gives you a really nice, um, well-spaced graph. Um, that'll complete your full cycle in four points. And your vertical scale can usually just be one. Okay, you'll have found all of that information, and you also can go ahead and find the asymptotes of your actual graph. So that'll be your asymptotes of the secant graph. Um, remember secant is just one over cosine. So the asymptotes of secant are going to happen anywhere cosine has an original zero um, or X intercept. Okay, and a really easy way to do this is to set your horizontal transformations, which is that BX right here, the inputs of your secant function, and set them equal to where cosine has its zeros. So that's at pi over two plus pi k. So that'll look like this. And then all you have to do to find the adjusted asymptotes for whatever graph you're working with is solve for x. So you'll just divide every term by b. Um, and do note that k is going to be an integer. And by plugging in different integers, you'll get different asymptotes for your graph. And we'll look at that a lot more in a lot more detail um, in our later worked out examples. All right, so in step two, we're going to plot our companion pattern. So basically you're graphing the companion equation cosine. Okay, remember we're still working toward our secant graph, um, but if you're familiar with the three steps to, se three steps to sketch method for cosine equations, um, then this will be identical. So you'll already have this down. Um, but just to review, so the companion pattern, um, because cosine is our companion equation, it's going to be maximum, first zero, minimum, second zero. And that'll generate a really nice cosine pattern. Um, here's a little bit more detail about each of those points. 
So you'll find the maximum at zero and then whatever your value for A is. The first zero will happen at your first horizontal tick mark um, because we very intentionally designed that horizontal axis scale. The minimum will happen at the second horizontal tick mark and its Y coordinate will have the value negative A. And the second zero will happen at the third horizontal tick mark. All right, if you do happen to have a negative out front of your pattern, um, it'll essentially be the same. So the above is when A is greater than zero. And if you have that negative, if A is less than zero, your pattern's going to adjust um, just so your minimum comes first, basically the maximum and switch places because the graph has vertically flipped. All right, so notice that we are graphing the companion function here. So essentially you're graphing the same equation as if it were cosine. And in the next step, that's where we're going to create the reciprocal graph. All right, so step three is a fun one. I like to call reciprocal recip, sketch, and repeat. Kind of make it a verb there. All right, so we are going to create the reciprocal graph. And you see here, the maximum will become a local minimum. The zero will become an asymptote. We kind of talked about that when we talked about finding asymptotes. The minimum of your companion equation will become a local maximum. And then the other zero will also become an asymptote. So we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in just a moment. And then we will sketch the graph and then we'll repeat it for as many cycles as we need. Okay, so here is a template that I like to use. Um, it just keeps all your information organized. It kind of condenses everything we just talked about in the three steps into um, a very usable template. Um, and I work through every single graph just like this. So here's a quick grid. And so that you see what this looks like without actually working through a whole example, let's just pretend we were graphing as the companion the basic cosine graph, y equals cosine x. Okay, so I'm not going to work through every single bit of information. I'll post a lot more examples soon that will have everything worked out using this template, but I just want you to see what the secant graph looks like right now, because once you know what the graph looks like, um, all your future examples will seem to fall into place. Okay, so the basic graph of cosine, um, without even labeling, we'd have a maximum, a zero, a minimum, a zero, and then repeat. So your graph is gonna look like this for the companion equation. So when we complete step three, where we recip, sketch, and repeat, here's what's going to happen. Well, the reciprocal of, let's just use our example in this case, one is just one. Let's take a value in here, say about one half. When you take the reciprocal of one half, you get two, okay? Um, if you try to take the reciprocal of zero, you get something undefined. So that's where we'll have a vertical asymptote. Okay, reciprocal of negative one half, of course, is gonna be negative two. Reciprocal of negative one is negative one. So you can kind of follow that through. We have another reciprocal of negative one half, and I'm just choosing values so we can see what this secant graph is going to look like. Um, we'll have another vertical asymptote because we have another zero that becomes undefined when we flip it. A one half becomes a two, a one stays a one. So here's what the secant graph looks like. And you won't have to go through this every single time. Once you know what the secant graphs look like, um, it'll be very easy to just work from the companion. So we'd have a graph here. We have a curve here. And we have one here. So this is one full cycle of a basic secant graph. Um, specifically, this is um, a very rough sketch of y equals secant x um, without any of the labeling done. And of course, once you have one cycle, you can, and we've sketched it in, we can just repeat this pattern over and over and over again. Um, so you see working from, let's work backwards, we can call this a local minimum. We should see the graph would curve up like this. We'd have another asymptote here. We'd have another curve that would work up to its local maximum, like this, an asymptote here. 
Okay, and so you get the idea. We would just continue this pattern over and over and over again for as many cycles as we needed. All right, so hopefully this gives you a, a better understanding of our template for sketching unshifted secant graphs using this three steps to sketch method. Um, if everything hasn't fallen into place yet, don't worry about it. S graphing secant is a very complex task um, that really is going to start to click once you work enough examples. Um, so like I said before, I will be posting many, many more worked examples of secant graphs where I'll be using this method. Um, so check those out and thank you so much for watching.